Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to all of you. Very warm greetings for Diwali. It's a small audience, but <coughs> we're glad to see all of you here. Thank you so much. Um, on behalf of Epic the Channel, I welcome you all to our presentation in the Epic Lecture Series, Living Music from the Past by Shubha Madhkar. One of the most versatile and popular performers in India, Shubhaji needs no introduction. Equally at ease with Khayal and Thumri Dadra, as with indie pop and contemporary cross-cultural experiments, Shubhaji is a recognized composer and the recipient of several awards. She has also been closely involved with several projects related to music education in India. Today she shares some thoughts on the documenting, archiving and harvesting of the treasures of Indian music. Ladies and gentlemen, over to Shubhaji. Namaskar to all of you and greetings for the season. Um, thank you very much for sparing time, especially on, on a day when I know many of you would be busy with Bhai Dooj and other celebrations. But thank you for being here. I'm also grateful to the India Habitat Center and the Epic Channel for giving me this chance to speak about some of the projects um, concerned with archival music. Um, and. I cherish the opportunity to share some experiences with all of you today. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on stressing the need for documenting and archiving because I think that is all too evident to everybody. But particularly with regard to musical traditions which have relied on oral transmission, I think it's important to understand uh, the kind of problems and the kind of issues that uh, often raise their heads in some of the most well-intentioned projects and in some of the most well-intentioned efforts that have been on for, for decades now. Uh, a lot of people have already worked on archiving, on documenting and on sharing, um, disseminating from those archives and um, although I don't have a kind of a comprehensive pan-Indian um, list of those, some of those w with whom I've had the chance to work, I would like to mention their work and their contribution in the field. So, of course, there is the one big center, the ARCE in Gurgaon, which houses a lot of collections, a lot of um, information, different um, uh, material in different formats, a lot of music collections uh, which have been housed there by different scholars working on Indian music over the ages. There is also the very interesting um, traveling archive which is also online, um, the travelingarchive.org which some of you might want to look at. This is uh, primarily uh, the work of a singer from Bengal, Moshumi Bhamik, who has been traveling in several parts of Bengal, um, staying <coughs> with musicians, traditional musicians and folk musicians in the area and has built up a kind of, in fact she mentions it in the traveling archive and I thought I would mention this point here because I think this is one of the problem areas when you are working with documenting and archiving. She talks of building up a great <coughs> deal of trust. So uh, when she visits a musician and stays with them, uh, she feels that there a certain rapport is set up with the musicians and they give her uh, that wealth of information which they have inherited very often they are um, from families of musicians and so this is really their wealth and their inheritance which they hand over to her on the condition that it will never be exploited commercially. Uh, but there are no uh, sort of clearances, no licenses, no permissions on uh, which sort of state very clearly the manner of dissemination and the manner of transmission. And she feels that she would like to keep it that way because that entire idea of trusting um, and of building up this kind of uh, faith between people seeking knowledge and people giving knowledge that she feels is a very cherished part of Indian culture. And she feels that she would like to maintain the traveling archive with this sense of great trust. Um, in the recent past, there has also been the Nad Sagar Archives and Documentation Society for South Asian Music and that too um, is working online. So it has the archive of IndianMusic.org where um, people are encouraged to, to deposit, make their collections available online and you have to become a member but it's a free membership and thereafter you are able to listen to the collections that um, have been um, deposited there. Um, 
Vikram Sampath has also worked on, on, on an archive and he also allows access to members. In fact, he allows uh, members to even edit information about an artist or about a piece of music. And so it's a sort of a Wikipedia-like situation where you can not only listen to a piece of music, but if you feel that the information provided is incorrect or you have more additional information to provide, you are actually able to edit the information and add your own collections as well. So there are several of these um, archives. There are also several archives that have worked only with classical music. And uh, one of these is housed in Ahmedabad. It was started by the Saptak School of Music and what they started doing many, many years ago um, was to record each of the performances that every performer ever made. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I've been working with, I've been performing for them since I was in my early 20s and so that's a long, long time ago. But um, over the years, uh, I mean, while there is complete trust, I don't recall a single occasion on which Saptak actually asked me if they could uh, record the performance. Uh, the performance has been <coughs> the performances have been digitized. The catalog is available online, but you actually have to go to the archives to the to where it is situated in Ahmedabad to be able to actually refer to them and to actually make use of them. Now, <coughs> this is a very very valuable collection because. Uh, it was run by a school of music and because it was run on very meager funds, the, the school itself ran on very meager funds.